Okay, welcome everybody to the Laws of Lashon Hara. We are on Klal Bez, Halacha Yud, which is 2.10. So we've been talking about the Heter of Apit Lasa, which is that according to the Rambam, again, we don't hold like this, this Halacha is not practical, but we're discussing the opinion of the Rambam. He says that if something is said in front of three people and it's negative, it is allowed to be repeated to others because it will anyway get around to people. People are anyway going to hear about this, so by you repeating it, since it was already said in front of three people, you're not considered a talebearer because you're not really telling something to somebody that they wouldn't really know anyway. And again, we don't paskin like this, but we said even in this opinion of the Rambam, it is very limited. You're not allowed to add anything to it. You're not. It has to be said, Derek uh, Agav, backhandedly, just in the midst of conversation. You can't go around purposely um, spreading the word. And also, if it was said in front of three people, and even one of them is God-fearing or his relative, so we would assume they wouldn't repeat it, so you can't say it anyway. So there were many, many um, limitations to this, even in the opinion of the Rambam. So let's continue with this in Halacha Yud, number 10. V'da'od, no further. Dekol ha-heter ta'apit lasuhu mitzad ha-omer. Av mitzad ha-shemeya, ta'hainu imhu yoideya es teva ha-shemeya, sh'tikev kishe yishma yekabel davar zela emes. Let's al Shimon. Let's say that you are in the presence of three people, or you're one of the three people. Somebody says something negative, so you go and tell somebody. You go and tell your friend Yenta. But you know Yenta doesn't keep her mouth shut, and she's going to go tell the whole town, and she's going to exaggerate um, everything that was said. And she's going to make it sound much worse. La Adam Kazet, to this type of person, Asr Lomer Shum Remez Shoganai. You can't say anything negative about anybody to this person. Even in this case, over one violates the prohibition of one is not allowed to put a stumbling block in front of a blind person, which means that we can't allow anybody to sin and we can't help or assist people in sinning in any way. So therefore, even according to the opinion of the Rambam, it would be forbidden to go and tell this type of person that Anything negative, even if it was said in front of three people. Just like we explained in the introduction to this lav, And this even applies if you don't even say who the original person who said the evil speech was, but even if you just say what was said, but you don't say the person who originally said the evil speech, that is also prohibited. Now, this is the uh, this is important. Uh, continues the Chavetz Chaim. After we said all of these things, what he's really been discussing for the past several paragraphs. Look, my brother. You have to distance yourself very far from this leniency. He writes that to fulfill all of these conditions for the leniency, it is impossible that it's almost impossible that you're ever going to meet all the conditions of the leniency. And furthermore, most of the poskim, most of the halachic decisors, most of the rabbis disagree with the leniency in the first place. So we have two strikes against us. Or again, we're talking about saying something in front of that was said in front of three people being allowed to repeat it. So number one, the Chavetz Chaim says, to meet all the conditions is pretty much impossible. Number two, most of the rabbis disagree with the leniency in the first place. So practically, again, even if you hear Lashon Hara that was said in front of three people, and even though people might find out about it anyway, one is still not allowed to repeat that evil speech. Okay. That was... Now, based on this principle, the Chavetz Chaim is going to tell us about another case. Now, based on what we explained about this, we have to. So, one has to be careful. So they used to have in the cities there was something called Shiva Tuvehayir. There were seven seven elders of the city that would sit and uh, they were in charge of deciding the. Um, the issues of the city. They were like the town council. So this obviously doesn't just apply to the Shiva Tuvehayir, this specific 
this specific uh, seven member council, but any meeting that you have, any board meeting or any town council, this would apply. Binyani harchos, right? They would judge, uh, they would make laws. This council would also decide matters that if there was a dispute between two people, you know, he, they were like the judge duty of the time, small claims court. This one is responsible to pay this one $100 or $200, $5,000, whatever it is, they would decide court cases. Very often the council, people would have differences of opinion. So what did the council do, right? What every council does, they have a vote behind closed doors. They would discuss the issue and then they would vote like a jury and whoever had the majority, whoever had four on their side, that's who the halacha, that's who the, the ruling would go like. When they would come out into public, you have to be very careful, that each member of the council, he shouldn't say what his individual opinion was or what somebody else's opinion was. You can't say, let's say, Reuven and Shimon have a dispute in court, and the court sides with Reuven, says Reuven is correct. But you disagreed. You voted for Shimon. You're not allowed to go and tell Shimon, you know, I voted for you, but I was outvoted. What can I do? That is a total prohibition. That's considered Lush and Hara. You're not allowed to go and say and reveal who voted which way. So that's very important to know when someone has a board meeting, let's say, they're, uh, whatever it is, you're on a town, you're on a council for some organization, and you come out, and there was a vote, and uh, you voted a certain way, and you voted to help this guy out, and he wants to know, did you support me? Even if it's true that you hold these 100% right, since you were outvoted, you're not allowed to say that you supported him. That's considered Lashon Hara. It doesn't even matter, for sure, if the council agreed, they had a deal that you're not allowed to reveal, uh, what happened in the board meeting. For sure you're not allowed to say it. And for sure, if that was the case, and you tell it to the person who, uh, one of the plaintiffs or defendants in the case, you're not allowed to say, Even if it's just stam, you have the meeting, and there was no specific thing said about... Uh, not repeating it, and you don't even talk about it to the defendants. You tell a third party, right? Reuven and Shimon had a court case. Reuven was found to be in the right, and you voted for Shimon. You're not allowed to go tell a third party. You can't tell Levi, yeah, you know, I really voted for Shimon, but no one else uh, voted for him. That's, that's totally prohibited. Even if you don't mean to speak Lashon Hari, you're just like spreading it out. Now let's say that. It's also totally prohibited. Right, you're not allowed to tell the guy, or you're not allowed to tell Shimon, you know, I wanted to find in your favor, but what could I do? You're not allowed to tell Shimon, uh, you know, originally Shimon, I thought you were correct, and then I changed my mind that I think you're incorrect. Not allowed to say that either. Right, even it doesn't matter if you go to Shimon on your own to tell him what happened, and it doesn't matter if Shimon is nudging you and begging you, tell me what happened, tell me what happened, tell me what happened. Now let's say anything. The call is is that right, it's very difficult sometimes, right? Sometimes you feel very passionate about a cause and you go into a meeting. And you, uh, you know, fight for your uh, beliefs, and you get outvoted. So you, you know, very often you want to go and tell the person you were <coughs> fighting for that he was correct. Not allowed to do that. It's lush and hara. Okay, let's go on to. Let's just finish with halacha beis. Yud beis. Pardon me. Twelve. I want to write something else explicitly. Many people. Are, uh, make this mistake. They they commit this error. When someone gives a speech in synagogue, it's it, it's inappropriate to speak disparagingly about him. And to say that his speech uh, didn't really wasn't good. It didn't have anything worthwhile in it. And there was nothing worth listening to. We see many people that violate this. They don't think this is a prohibition. And according to the halacha, this is total lashon hara. 
because through this speech, it can cause damage to a person. Bimamono, right, it can cause him to lose his job. Let's say the rabbi gives a speech, and you say, oh, that was such a bad speech. The rabbi doesn't know what he's talking about. And word gets around, people start talking, and they start viewing the rabbi negatively, and he can get fired. The kamapa'am sarubir, she can cause pain and embarrassment. Gamkin. Kilo yehishu hudavar emes, halo loshin har, even if it's true. Loshin har asa, right? Even if it's true, the rabbi gave a horrible speech, not allowed to say it. Or not only the rabbi, anybody, but it's obviously it's worse if it's a rabbi, a Torah scholar, or a Jewish leader. So what, what purpose do you have to say this negative thing about your friend, right? We're going to talk about later that under certain situations, when there's a purpose to the evil speech, it's permitted with many criteria. But this has no purpose. Right? If he was a good person, what, what should you do? You hear a bad speech. What, what should be the reaction? For sure, you should not go and speak disparagingly about the person who was speaking or the teacher who was giving a lecture. Rather, you should go and try to give him advice. Privately, give him advice. You know the way you should tell him the way you're speaking now. People aren't really listening. Right, you should go to the person in private and say, you know, I think uh, maybe your speech was. Uh, really good. You should always start with a compliment. You know, you uh, put in a lot of effort, or whatever it is, or you project well, but uh, I think people aren't really listening for X, Y, and Z, and maybe you could improve. And the Chavetz Chaim says, not only do you not violate the prohibition of Lashon Hara, but you fulfill the mitzvah of a half to of loving your, your, fellow, <coughs> your fellow Jew, which is a positive mitzvah, because obviously ourselves, if we were in that situation, we were public speaking and we didn't do a good job, we wouldn't want someone speaking negatively about us to everybody. We want someone to come up to us privately and give us advice so that we can improve. This will stop here for today. And I hope everyone has a happy and healthy Shabbos.